Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Augustus, and I'm back again with another episode of Tsukihime. When we last left off, well, we had a conversation with Senpai, and um, well, we convinced her to take her to, to we convinced her to take us to school. So, uh, oh, so we can start the final confrontation with Roa. That is. A lot to take in and a lot to consider about what's coming up next because um, I think there's going to be quite a few action scenes between uh, between now and the end. Uh, I don't know how many. My memory is not that good. My memory is shit, actually. But anyway, let's get into it, shall we? We arrive at school. Even though she was carrying me, Senpai isn't even out of breath and she ran as swiftly as if she was sprinting by herself. Tonokun, can you walk? Barely. We're going to kill Roa, so we can't go in like this. That's true. Then please walk on your own from here. Senpai lowers me to the ground. The school is eerily quiet. Once we go inside, all that's left is a fight to the death. I take off my glasses after a deep breath. My head starts to pound. In addition to not being able to move myself fully, I feel really sick. This isn't good. Senpai looks up at the night sky with a serious expression. A full moon. The radiant moonlight illuminates the school grounds. What isn't good? Yes, the true ancestors are said to be originally from the moon, so they gain much strength from the moon. This is the same for Roa, as a dead apostle under the true ancestors, he, so he is practically immortal tonight. With my current equipment, I may not be able to fully kill him, so why don't you, uh, so why don't you have the, uh, seventh scripture, or seventh sacrament, or seventh, god, I can't remember, I think it's the seventh holy scripture, I don't remember. She grits her teeth practically immortal but that doesn't mean a thing to me if I can get close even if in the next instance I'll be stabbed in the chest once more if I can get close I can pierce his death it's very bright tonight it will be difficult to conceal ourselves in the darkness I'm rather fond of moonlit nights but it's a little different tonight I'm pretty sure that was CL yeah senpai sighs the pale shining moonlight and the frigid night air. I can even see the lines of death growing. Really? I don't like moonlit nights. Tonokun? Creak. My brain creaks. Rather than in sunshine, I can unpleasantly see everything clearly in the weak moonlight. I like the strong sunshine that erases everything, or a real darkness. Creak. Not pain, but my brain actually does start creaking. Man, it seems like I'll go especially crazy tonight. Everything seems to die easily. It's like I'm in the desert of the moon. But with this, there's no way I'll miss Roa's death either. I put my glasses back on. Gripping my knife, I walk towards the school building. So is, uh, I wonder how much, uh, Senpai knows about our eyes. Oh, well, whatever. I pass through the front entrance. Even walking normally is difficult. The distance to the school building seems incredibly long. Tonokun will split up here. Senpai says this suddenly. From here on, please go ahead by yourself. I will be doing something else. Something else? Senpai, you're going to do something? Maybe now she'll go get the Seventh Holy Scripture. Now look, even my goal is to deal with Roa. It seems this Roa is stronger than his previous host, so I can't face him directly. When you and Arcoid are killed by Roa, I will use that opening to dispose of him. Oh, how, uh... 
I like I like the confidence in us, CLS. Very nice of you. She says this directly with a serious expression. You're really serious, senpai. Yes. That was the last time I'm letting personal circumstance enter my work. You're fighting for her, aren't you, Tonokun? Like that, I also have my reasons. So from now on, I cannot help you. Yeah, you're, uh... Well, we'll learn about your reasons in the next route. Oh, yeah, thanks, senpai. Since this might be goodbye, let me say I liked you, senpai. It was fun spending time with you and Arihiko talking about stupid things. Yes, it was like a dream for me, too. Senpai disappears towards the building like a black shadow. Well, time to go. I push my body, which hurts every time I move, and I run into the school building. It's creak, creak, creak. My chair is, uh, does not like me moving. The school building is full of cracks. As if a small typhoon was let loose inside, they shift higher and higher. It seems the fight between Arcoade and Roa already began. Upstairs. I spit this out as I dash up the stairs. I gasp for air. I make it to the fourth floor. The cracks running through the walls continue down the hallway into the passageway which connects the two buildings. Damn it. I somehow manage to move my wavering legs and run towards the connecting passageway. I pass through the hallway and reach its intersection with that passageway. And that's the last stop. In the middle of the passageway, two figures are glaring at each other from a distance. Shiki stands at the end of the passageway, reaching to the nearby building, wide open. And in the very center, Arcoade is kneeling on the floor, breathing hard. Arcoade. I start to dash towards her. But before that, Arcoade, still kneeling, looks up at me intensely. move. The instant her eyes fixates on me, my body, as if becoming stone, doesn't move at all. How awful, binding your friend with their mystic eyes like that. It would have been okay for you to let him die with you. <laughs> Shiki, no, Roa laughs amusedly. Mystic eyes, why? I'll be back in just a minute. I need to go get some more water. Sorry about that. I went to go grab some water to take a sip very quickly and realized that my water bottle was empty. So, nah, I'm, I'm back. Mystic eyes. Why? Why is Arcoade using them on me? Finally. Even though I finally made it here on time. Why? Why, Arcoade? Arcoade looks away from me and directs her gaze at Roa. She doesn't say anything. She doesn't say anything to me. She only glares at the enemy in front of her as she breathes painfully. Why? Why? I can't even shout. Not because of her mystic eyes, but because I finally made it here. Cursing my ineffectiveness, my body, which I forced for so long, starts to lose its heat. Roa laughs loudly as he watches the two of us. I see. You are finally prepared, princess. Roa leisurely walks over to Arcoid. Arcoid remains kneeled, unmoving. My, my, you're getting pretty good, Shiki. It seems the princess here is going to fight me to save you. If it were the former princess, you would be terrifying, but you are now just a regular vampire. You don't even have the power of a true ancestor anymore. Jeez, it would have been better if only you fell to your desires. Quiet. Arcoade's voice echoes through the hallway. 
know, so it's Ark. What is this? If it's not a hallucination, everything around Arkway it starts to waver. Whoa. Roa starts walking forward. Marble Phantasm? You can't still use that. As to be expected from the royalty of the true ancestors. You know, my voice for him is super inconsistent, but uh, I'm an inconsistent person. Roa retreats forcefully. However, you cannot win against me, because I have something you lack. Arcoid stops breathing, as if ceasing all movement in order to gather up all her strength. You know, don't you? Right, it is all, it is the experience of death. I know what death is, but you do not. That is our difference. Well, as long as something is alive, it cannot experience death. The only one who knows is probably the is probably only an infinite reincarnator like me. The wavering of everything around Arcoid grows stronger. Humans are instinctually afraid of the unknown. This does not change even for transcendent races like the true ancestors. No matter how much of the occult you study, no matter how long lived you are, you cannot experience death. You all gain so much power by resisting death, but at the same time, it is the source of your weakness. You run away from death, whereas I accept it. That is the difference in nature between you, Agoué Brunestad, and I, Michael Roa Valdemjean. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Even now, I live in a human in this air. Wait, what? I li- uh, Even now, I live as a human in this age. Okay, I'm just dumb and was reading the G as an R. I thought in this R. Okay. An out-of-place ghost like yourself has no right to judge me. Crack. The glasses, the glass along the passageway starts to break. I know. About death. About the darkness. The nothingness which I have journeyed through so many times. Okay, that's Aroa. To me, death is nothing more than a common ritual. Let's say you destroy this body right here. I'll still remain in this world. Why, don't you understand? It's useless to fight me. Roa spreads his arms higher. Arcoid does not answer. All right. If you still insist on challenging me, I will not stop you. Your resistance will be rewarded. Roa lowers his arms and crouches. Everything around Arcoid seems on the verge of bursting apart. Up. I can't speak. This isn't good. My brain screams to me. I shouldn't let this happen. I don't know why. I don't even have proof. Just I, someone who has seen lots of death, can tell. Roa and Argoid, which one of them is closer to death? Stop. I can't. Speak. I can't crack. The sound of the air itself ripping apart. The warping of Arcoid's surrounding propagates along the entire passageway. The entire hallway pulses. The glass windows, the wall, the hallway, the whole building. They become rolling waves as if they were a shredder with tens, hundreds, thousands, no, a countless number of blades. In a single instant, Roa's body disappears. Distorted, sliced, compressed. All that remains are his ankles. The sliding of the hallway ceases. Maybe it only lasted a moment. The passageway is like it was before. Only all that's left are Roa's ankles. 
this is going to be like a cell moment where he grows out of the single cell that was left. Whatever. But it didn't end there. Uh, the ankles start to move. They start to run towards Arcoid. As they do, with each step, a leg, his hip, his other leg, his torsos, his arm sprout to life. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, apparently it is like Cell, where he regenerated from a single cell. Well, he didn't regenerate from a single cell, he re regenerated from his feet. But, uh, you know, it's actually kind of a funny visual. I'd love to see an animation of that, or uh, like a really, really good quality uh, CGI, like something like, shit, I dropped my phone again, like an idiot, like really high quality. Uh, I don't know. I actually don't know where my phone went. Oh, there it is, under me, that's weird. I'm apparently all thumbs today. Well, that's not true. If I was all thumbs, I'd actually be able to hold my phone. Arcoid is kneeling, not moving. Directly in front of her, Roa's neck and head come back into being. Ar I couldn't warn her in time. The completely regenerated Roa slices through her stomach. Like cutting cleanly through the line with no slicing of flesh, no flowing of blood. That was close. I knew it was correct to choose tonight. If the moon was waning even the slightest bit, I would not have regenerated from just an ankle. And princess, you couldn't regenerate that wound. My claws have the same ability as that man over there. Thud. Arcoid collapses to the floor. This is the power I got from experiencing death. Ironically, I don't even I, I did not know how to use this myself. But he taught me. For someone who has seen death, perceiving its form was not difficult. Roa boasts as he kicks Arcoid. Her body tumbles towards me. Uh, Arcoid. I can move again. It's because the power behind her mystic eyes has vanished. It means her power is no longer working. Damn. Shaking the thought from my mind, I hold her close. A chill runs through me the instant I hold her. Her body is terribly cold. The only heat left within her is like a candle about to go out. Roa stands before us. But I don't care about that. Right now, I just want to help Arcoid. Arcoid. Sorry about that. I'm an idiot. I accidentally, uh... Well, my record button, I mean, nobody cares, I'm sure. My record button is next to my, it's on my keypad. It's next to the button I use to uh, advance scenes. Um, and I uh, stretched my hand after I pushed it, to, you know, to advance to this scene and then accidentally pushed the, uh, the end scene button because I'm a fucking moron. And I will have to splice these, this video with the last one because I'm not. I'm an idiot. Oh, well. I call out to her. Her closed eyes open energetically, as if waking from a dream. Aha, uh -huh. that was very lame, wasn't it? With patchwork brightness, Arcoid puts forth a strained smile. You... What kind of stupid things are you saying? Why... Why did... I can't speak clearly. I wanted to say something more. Something better, but my brain doesn't work. I can't be calm now. As I hold her, the lack of my the lack of lingering warmth in her body tells me it's hopeless. If I took off my glasses, there's no doubt I would see something even more hopeless. More than anything else, I don't want to see that. Why? 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 It's all I could manage to say. Exasperated at myself, I hold her tightly. 
there's no embrace in response. She doesn't have any strength left in her. All she does is smile happily. No. This can't be happening. Why? Why did... Why did you do it all by yourself? We're partners. We said we'd help each other to the very end. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I kind of forgot. How can you forget? This, this makes me useless. I said I would help you. I said I would definitely help you, but I couldn't even help one bit. No, and that's not it at all, Shiki. You've helped me more than enough. That's why it's enough already. Cough. She coughs up blood and smiles painfully. So, I wanted to thank you. In the end, I'm glad I was able to protect you from Roa. I gasp. Arkawade's glazed over eyes don't see anything. Not her wound, or even Roa who still lives. Her time, since attacking a while ago, ended right then. Uh, yeah. Th thanks. Thanks. I can't. I can't even lie properly. The light in her eyes is fading. Her body warmth is rapidly approaching zero. I'm going to lose. Am I going to lose her like this? Are... Kuwait... Yes. Drink my blood. If you do that, you'll get your power back. Not even thinking. I scream that out. She doesn't answer, but slightly, she shakes her head. Why? Oh, tell me you're still scared. Look, you said it before, right? You asked me if, what if birds or fish had the same amount of intelligence? Could I eat them? I would. If it meant I would live, I would. Isn't stealing things from others to live a natural law of the world? That's what she said herself back then. So why? Why does she just shake her head with those pitiful eyes? I don't like talking about what ifs. A denial. But that was my line back then. But she said before, she likes playing what if. Because it feels like there's hope. Really? I like what ifs. Even if it's sugarcoating things. I feel there's always some hope. Isn't there? But I can't finish. My throat is just too tight. I can't speak properly, you and me both. That's true. But right now, there's something else I want more. With a wavering voice, I ask her what it is. Yeah. I want you to kiss me, Shiki. What? Such a simple thing. Is that all right? I press my lips to hers. It isn't sweet like before, or gentle. Just a kiss where I press my cold lips against hers without any warmth. After that, she smiles as if extremely happy. I always wanted to do something like that. Oh, you really like strange things. Yes, but I'm still happy. Just that 
felt so good. I've lived for so long, but I've never been happy like I am now. So, I kind of thought to myself, maybe disappearing like this might be good. After murmuring such a thing, all the warmth disappears from her body. And I think this, ladies and gentlemen, this little bombshell right there is where we're going to end off today's episode. Uh, that's a bit depressing and sad is, I guess, the question that I should pose for for next time is, is Arcoid alive? And, well, the answer to that is not so obvious, to be honest. Even, well, not even even, especially if you know Nasu's other works, that's not an obvious answer because she might be. This might have a bit of a happier ending. She might survive and she, her and Shiki could be together at least for a while until the end of one of their lives. Or, But also at the same time, knowing Nasu's works, it's very possible that she's gone and Shiki will spend the le rest of his life trying to attain the life that he wanted with her and the memory of her both are in my opinion very real very distinct possibilities um but it's you know it's hard to say for sure nasu's very good at cert at stuff like this about especially when you know about his like later with hindsight it's it's a very very difficult question and a very very powerful scene in my opinion i hope i did it at least some justice comparatively, but regardless of that, let's hope we see the outcome of this scene next time in Tsukihime, and I hope to see you all there.